Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 10-2, which is all about lines tangent to a circle. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use properties of tangent lines to solve problems. So let's jump in with example one and understand what a tangent is in relation to a circle. So a tangent to a circle is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point, and that one point is called the point of tangency. Now, where it intersects that circle, it also intersects with the radius at a 90 degree angle. So when you have a line that is tangent to the circle, you usually end up with some right triangles, okay? That's basically what you need to know with something that is tangent to a circle is remember that if it's tangent, that means you have a 90 degree angle, okay? Theorem 10-1, if line AB is tangent to circle C at point P, if we know that, if I know this line is for sure tangent, that means that my radius is perpendicular to that line. And the converse, remember, is when you just flip the order, if I know that this is a 90 degree angle, I know that line AB is tangent to circle C, okay? Now, what if I ask you if something is tangent? How can you tell if something's tangent? And I'm not meaning that you're gonna get out a protractor and start measuring things. What you're going to do is use information you already know about uh, right angles. So if I want to know, is KJ tangent to circle P at point J, that means, is this a right angle? And the way that we can figure that out, lovely Pythagorean theorem, I can take A squared plus B squared, and if it equals C squared, I know it is a right triangle, and therefore, segment KJ is tangent to circle P. However, if I do a squared plus b squared and it's not equal to c squared, that means that segment kj is not tangent to circle p at point j. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 6 and a square it, take my 9, square it, and say, is that equal to my entire hypotenuse is 4 here and 6 more, so this hypotenuse is 10, so that would be 10 squared. So it's 36 plus 81 equal to 100? No, therefore it is not tangent to the circle. That's all you have to do. Let's say I give you a slightly more challenging problem because I know you're up to it. Let's say I give you some variables in there. I still set it up the same way. I have a squared, so I'm just gonna use x. So I'm gonna say x squared plus, I'm going to take my other leg, so the non-hypotenuse side, 24, square it, and say, is that equal to, this side is x units and 18 more. So I'm going to say x plus 18 squared. Okay, so x squared, I'm going to leave as x squared. 24 is 24 squared is 576, and this is where you are going to draw on some of your knowledge from Algebra 1, and if we have x plus 18 squared, that is not x squared plus 18 squared. You have to FOIL your answer. So, for those of you that don't remember how to FOIL, we have x plus 18 times x plus 18. Multiply your first term, so that's x squared, plus your outer terms, that's 18x, plus your inner terms, that's 18 more x. So I have a total of 36x, and then 18 times 18 gives me 324. Okay, so you guys are going to have to FOIL things, I promise you. Okay, so I have x squared plus 576 equals x squared minus or er, plus 36x plus 324. I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So then those end up canceling. 
And then I'm going to move this 324 away from the term with the x. So I'm left with 100, or no, 252. And 36x, if I divide both sides by 36, I am left with x equals 7. So I know x equals 7, and I'm going to be tempted to stop there because I solved for x. But that's not what I was asking for. I was asking for the radius of r. So I need to double check to make sure that that is my radius. In this case, that is my final answer because it's just x. But if I had asked for rt, I would do 7 plus 18, and 7 plus 18 would give me 25. But the directions do just ask for the radius, and the radius is just x, so my radius is 7. Just always make sure you go back and double check what you're solving for. And our last problem, that's these are all from example two. It's just three types of problems. So line M is tangent to circle T at point B, and line N is tangent to circle T at point C. What is the value of X? So if we look at this, I have a quadrilateral. And the way that I can solve this is I know that this is a 90 degree angle, this is a 90 degree angle because they are both tangent. And how many degrees are in a quadrilateral? There's 360. So I can do 360 minus 90 minus 90 minus the 135. And that'll tell me what angle A is or uh, what X equals. In this case, it equals 45 degrees. And that is all that I have to do for that one. Another way you could have solved it is you could cut this angle in half, this angle in half, and you'd have a right triangle that you could work with. Either way gets you to the correct answer. Now it's your turn. I want you to start with just letter A and determine is line MP tangent to circle N. Good luck. All right, for letter A, hopefully you got an answer that was no. There are a couple ways you could do it. You could either do 180 minus 58 minus 33, and you would see that that last angle is only 89 degrees instead of 90. Or you could have added your two angles together and found that they, they equal 91, and 91 plus 90 is not 180 degrees. The reason I was looking for the 180 is because it forms a triangle, right? And if I do 91 plus 90, I have more than 180 degrees, therefore that wouldn't be a triangle. So that is another way that you could test to see if it was tangent. Now I want you guys to take a minute and try letter B. Good luck. All right, hopefully for letter B, you ended up with 15 units. The way you get 15 units is you are going to do Pythagorean theorem with the two different sides. So LK is X plus 5. You're going to square that. That means you have to FOIL. Plus, our radius here is 9. My guess is if you got stumped on how to do this problem, it's because you forgot that LN was a radius. And you were thinking, I don't know what that number is. And you probably typed something in randomly and clicked next on Edpuzzle. So that's where I got the 9. Okay, and that's going to be equal to the other, the hypotenuse, so x minus 1 plus 9, so that's x plus 8, squared. So again, you're going to FOIL. When you FOIL and square everything, you are left with x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus 81 equals x squared plus 16x plus 64. The x squareds on both sides of the equal sign cancel. And I am left with 10x plus 106 equals 16x plus 64. Subtract 10x from both sides. You are left with 106 equals 6x plus 64. Subtract 64 from both sides. You get 42 equals 6x. Divide both sides by 6. You're left with x equals 7. Go back to the question. You know what x equals. Read the question again. What are you solving for? We want to know what is kn. 
So you plug that value in for kn. We know kn equals x minus 1 plus 9. So I say 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. If you have questions on that, please be sure to reach out for some help. All right, this theorem is going to introduce what the next example is about. If you have two segments with a common endpoint, that common endpoint is letter A in this picture, and they, both of those lines going out to that endpoint are tangent, so see we have those 90 degree angles. A cool fact, those two lines, those two tangent lines are congruent. That makes solving problems or setting problems up to solve really nice. So let's solve a problem like that. I'm going to make this picture just a little smaller. Okay, so we have a satellite requires a line of sight for communication. Between the ground stations farthest from the satellite, what is the amount of time needed for a signal to go from one station up to the satellite and then down to the other station? So the way that we're going to solve that is we have to figure out what is this distance. And notice that if we connect those radii, this is 6,371, because we're told the Earth's radius right here. 6,371, and that's kilometers. So don't go share a fun fact with your friend saying that it's 6,371 miles. You are going to be way wrong. So we have 6,371 kilometers as a radius. And then we're also told that the distance from the satellite to the Earth is 35,786. And if I add that to the radius of the Earth, that side ends up being 42,157. And we have a right angle, so I can solve for that side. So right triangle, x, 6,371. Uh, 6, then we have 42,157, because I added the radius and the distance to the satellite. And I can just do Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say x squared plus 6,371 squared equals 42,157 squared. Now, for those of you that are thinking those are going to be big numbers, I don't want to actually write those out, let me show you a shortcut. So x squared equals 42,157 squared minus 6,371 squared. So those numbers are much nicer to write. I'm giving up on getting that to be a blue one. Um, those numbers are much nicer to write than the actual squared numbers. So in your calculator, we have to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to do square root, and I'm literally just going to type it in to my calculator like this. That way I'm not typing in super long numbers, and I'll still get the correct answer. So this is 41,673 for the side. So 41,673 if I round to the nearest kilometer. Then let's go back to the question and figure out what are we solving for. What is the amount of time needed for a signal to go up from one station? So to go from here, up here to the satellite, and then down to the other station. So notice I'm not just, it's not just traveling 4, 41,673. It's going to do that distance twice, right? So then you have 41,673 over here. So we're going to do 41,673 times 2. And then in our picture, it tells us how fast radio waves travel. They travel at 300,000 kilometers per second. So you're going to take this number here and divide by 300,000 because you divide by the speed. And we know that to travel that distance, it is only going to take 0 0.28 seconds. So that travels, that radio wave travels ridiculously fast, right? Okay. Question three. This is another type of problem like that. 
uh, I want you to see if you can figure out what would the perimeter of ABCD be equal to. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you remembered that lines that are tangent to a circle that meet at the same endpoint are congruent. So I know those are congruent to each other. Those are congruent to each other. Those are congruent to each other. And those are congruent to each other. So I'm able to fill in all of those missing measures, add all of them together. I have 7 plus 7 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 6 plus 6. And if I add all of those together, I'm left with 36 units for a perimeter. Okay, so the concept summary for this lesson, basically just knowing what a tangent line is, being able to figure out if, there, if it is tangent, knowing what to do with that right angle and how to use that information to solve for different distances. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask, and I'd be more than happy to help you. Have a great day.